What's going on guys, my name is Matt, and it's no secret that the current gen consoles are offering a ton of performance per dollar. They're affordable, easy to set up, and for many people are an obvious choice. With that being said, many prefer to game on PC. While the price of performance may not always be as good, there are a lot of benefits to be had by going with a PC over a console. In today's video, I'm going to be putting an Xbox Series S up against a $300 gaming PC I built, talk about the pros and cons for both, and hopefully give you enough information to help you decide which path to choose. Before I get any further in the video, I want to thank HSN for sponsoring this video. They're currently running a pretty great promo where you can get an Xbox Series S bundle, including the console itself, along with an extra controller and a HyperX headset for only $350. Additionally, using the code HSN2022 will get new customers $20 off a purchase of $40 or more. Links and more information on this will be in the description below. So if you come out of this video deciding a console is right for you, I think this is a great deal on a bundle to get you up and running. Also, something I'd like to add is that while this is sponsored, I'm going to be giving you my full, unfiltered opinion on both options to make sure you make the right decision for yourself. So let's talk a little bit more in depth about the two challengers in today's showdown. On one side, we have the Xbox Series S, a console released in November of 2020 which is meant to be a more affordable little brother to the Series X, coming in at only $300 new. Inside of the box you get the console itself, along with the power adapter, HDMI cable, and a controller. If you opt for the $350 bundle, you'll also be receiving an additional controller, along with this HyperX Stinger headset designed to be used specifically with an Xbox. On the other side, we have a custom-built $300 gaming PC. This was built a few months back using new and used parts. This $300 really only includes the system itself, along with the power adapter. With that being said, you could pick up a cheap keyboard, mouse, headset, and HDMI cable for around $50, bringing the price to be in parity with the bundle featured in this video. I won't be including the cost of a display in this comparison because neither of these come with one and either can be hooked up to pretty much any TV or monitor. The first difference you notice immediately when putting these two systems next to each other is the size. The $300 PC featured is a pretty standard mid-tower computer. It's not massive by any means, but next to the tiny Series S, it looks huge. The Series S is extremely compact at under 3 liters in volume. A good visual example of how small it is is the fact an ITX motherboard doesn't even fit within the footprint of it. I don't think this size difference is going to be a major factor in someone's purchasing decision, but it is important to note that if you're wanting something super compact and space efficient, a console like the Series S is going to be smaller than basically any PC with standardized hardware in it. Moving on to the specs, this is another area where the PC is going to have a bit of trouble. The Xbox Series S is sporting an 8-core, 16-thread Zen 2 CPU, along with a 20-compute unit RDNA 2 GPU. It has 10GB of unified GDDR6 memory and a 512GB Gen 4 NVMe SSD. This system was designed to target gaming at 1440p 60fps. The $300 gaming PC is sporting a 6-core, 12-thread Ryzen 5 1600 CPU, along with an NVIDIA GTX 970 4GB graphics card. It has 16GB of DDR4 memory at 3200MHz, and a 512GB Gen 3 NVMe SSD. I made this system with the goal of running games at 1080p 60fps, and if you want to know the full specs and story behind it, I'll have a link to the original video about it down below in the description. The reality is that Microsoft loses money on their consoles to get people in the door and make up for it through the sale of digital items like games, movies, and other in-game purchases. Because of this, even going used for the PC like I did still results in a system with considerably lower specs. Obviously, specs don't tell the whole story, and there's still 100% a case to be made for the PC, which I'll be doing throughout this video, but the power difference is still important to note. So now let's talk about setup. The Series S being a console took all of 15 minutes to unbox, plug in, and get set up. I was even able to set it up using my phone, which is a lot easier than typing with the controller and on-screen keyboard. 
On the other hand, we have the $300 PC, which was definitely more involved. I first had to hunt down all the parts, which even with my knowledge took a couple of hours of time to find the right deals. Then I had to assemble it, install windows, and install drivers. This total process took many times longer than just clicking buy now on a console, opening it up, and being ready to game in under an hour of total time invested. With that being said, the enjoyment and pride of building your own system is something that I love and think many people would agree that it's well worth the effort. So if you're just wanting to game on a budget and not worry about all the technical stuff and setup, then the Xbox is the clear choice, but if you're a nerd and tinkerer like myself, then the process of researching and building a PC may actually be the more attractive option. So now let's talk about gaming on each of these systems, and how they perform relative to one another. The Xbox Series S doesn't have a disk drive, so just like with the PC, everything must be digitally downloaded. I'm going to be looking at three games specifically to give you an understanding of the performance and experience both these systems are offering. The first one I'm going to check out is Borderlands 3. This is a AAA title from a few years back, and both systems play it very well. On the PC side of things, this $300 computer plays Borderlands 3 at 1080p, medium settings with an average around 70 FPS, and 1% lows at 48. This looks and performs great in my opinion, and is a perfectly valid way of playing this game. On the console side of things, the Series S provides a constant 60 FPS at 1440p most of the time, but resolution scaling does kick in, dropping it to as low as 2112 by 1188 resolution to keep that constant 60 FPS. The game definitely looks a bit better on the Series S, but it's nothing major, and overall the experience of playing the game on both is pretty similar. The next game I want to talk about is a more demanding one in the form of Cyberpunk 2077. This game really tests the limits of both of these systems. On the PC side of things, to get a playable average above 30 FPS, I had to play at 1080p low settings, which honestly isn't an amazing experience. On the Series S, it plays this game at a variable resolution of 1440p down to around 1296p with a locked 30 FPS. Both these offer a playable experience. The version on the Series S does feel and look a bit better, but if you're wanting to play this game, going for a more high-end PC or something like a Series X might be the best option. With that being said, again, both these systems in this video provided a playable experience, but definitely not ideal experience in my opinion. The final game I'm going to look at is an esports title in the form of Fortnite. On the PC side of things, using pro settings and performance mode at 1080p, we get a pretty impressive 160 FPS average, but it's definitely choppy and laggy at times. On the Series S, Fortnite plays at 1080p with 120 FPS. I think overall the game looks and feels better on the Series S, which is to be expected. Overall, performance on both systems is great, but the newer and faster hardware in the Series S gives it the clear victory in this area. In terms of the total number of games available, the Series S officially has around 400 titles you can play on it, with the PC having more like 10,000 plus titles you can play on it. Both of these will support emulation. I haven't tested it out myself, but there are a ton of great videos on emulating older consoles on the Series S that I'd recommend checking out. With that being said, most people aren't going to be emulating older consoles, but it is worth noting. Another point to hit on is inputs and customization slash upgrades. On PC, you can play with keyboard and mouse, a controller, or pretty much any input device if you try hard enough. All the games on the Series S support controller, with some even supporting keyboard and mouse like Fortnite, which is great to see. In terms of customization and upgrades, the PC has the obvious win here, as it's fully upgradable and customizable. You can upgrade storage with the Series S with these expansion cards, but that's about it. Finally, let's talk about the warranty. The Xbox is a new product with a one year warranty, so if it breaks, you should be able to get a replacement for free. If you're building a PC with used parts like this one, then you likely don't have any warranty to fall back on if something goes wrong. With that being said, you can pretty easily fix a PC yourself if something fails, whereas with the Xbox, you pretty much need a professional if something goes wrong. So after going over all this information, you might be asking yourself, why would I ever choose a budget gaming PC over something like a Series S? Well, the main argument I would make is the fact the console pretty much only plays games, and the PC is a PC. You can run pretty much any Windows program on it, you can do productivity stuff for school or work, and you can even dip your toes into content creation with a system like this one. It's upgradable, customizable, and building a PC is a great way to learn a new skill. 
If you're wanting to go down the PC gaming path, I'd probably recommend saving up more like $600 to build a modern system with something like an i3-12100 and RX 6600, but I know for a lot of people that extra $300 just isn't doable. For those people, I still think that building a PC is totally possible, and if you enjoy tinkering it can be a lot of fun. But if all you have is $300 to $400 and you just want a game, the Series S may be the better option. So I think it's conclusion time. In terms of size, performance, ease of use, and setup, as much as I hate to say it, the Series S is the clear winner. With that being said, I still think a budget gaming PC like this $300 one may be the better option for a lot of people due to the flexibility of what you can do with it, along with the ability to upgrade it and customize it to your liking. If you're interested in a Series S, like I said at the beginning of the video, today's sponsor HSN is offering a $350 bundle that includes the console itself, an extra controller, and a HyperX Stinger headset. The controller is a standard Xbox wireless controller, and the headset is a wired unit that plugs in the controller. It's very comfortable and offers pretty good sound quality through the 50mm drivers and built-in mic. Additionally, using the code HSN2022 will get new customers $20 off the purchase of $40 or more. Make sure to check out the links in the description for the bundle, and thanks again to HSN for sponsoring this video. So yeah guys, I think this wraps this video up, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Oh, and as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.